hey guys welcome back to my channel so from the description you already know what today's video is going to be about like from my last video i promised you guys that we're going to be doing a series um for the rest of this month called dealing with and it is just to create awareness and to just talk about different things that we deal with and today i'm going to be talking about dealing with depression i'm going to be sharing my depression story it's not such a happy story but it is what it is and i'm over that phase now so anyway without further ado let's get into the video so my depression kind of started when i was in high school where um i used to get bullied and my own bullying story is just odd because it was a girl in my set and her clique that used to bully me so this all started between me and the girl it's not just one where she had this guy that she liked and the guy was my best friend and she thought that he broke up with her because of me in just one or something happened to both of them and they broke up and she thought it was because of me so she, it was like she dedicated her life in school to make him mind miserable and she did i won't lie to you she did and like this started from like just three she was still my friend then i didn't even suspect anything from them but apparently she already started like it was already in the box when i think i think back on it now i'm just like wow anyway so just three um Something happened and then I was when I knew that you this girl is out for me. So it just it got really bad in senior school and that's quite embarrassing to say because most people get bullied in junior school by their seniors and then my story is just different. It's very very in fact I got bullied very strongly when I was in senior school and it for a while I didn't tell anybody was when I was in senior school because I just thought it was really embarrassing like but you know what, that's my story and my strength is in my story. So anyway, I noticed that I started getting depressed when I was in SS1. And it wasn't just because of this, this girl, but she was a very big, very, very, she had a very big role to play in, you know, my life and just in getting me to that point. Anyway, so uh, when I was in SS1, I think when I was in SS1 or SS2, I got this friend. Or rather god blessed me with this friend her name is aurel yoli shout out or any day anytime she's still like the love of my life any day so she was like she really held me down Aurel and candy yeah i had like candy was my school son so he was like he was like my school son but he was like my baby anyway and he was like my best friend two of them like held me down throughout my senior school we, like no matter what happens they were always there for me to talk to and they, were just, they just helped me so much no matter how depressed i got or no matter how <laughs> my voice shaking but no matter how bad anything got once they were there i was okay like i will always love them because they don't know what they did for me <sighs> yes i might need to take a break soon but they don't know what they did for me and yeah that was just how i started to sleep with depression but like it didn't get so bad until when i was in ss3 and we were on I don't know if you guys have this stuff in your schools or we're on extension break or something of the sort and like all the girls in my set like ganged up against me and it was the worst thing till date i'm how am i i'm 22 that happened when i was about 16 or 15 i don't really remember but till date that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me it was much worse than people thought it was people, like the people that did these things to me probably would have never known that it's affected to this point or that it, it, would, it would affect my life so much but it did and you know what it's okay because i mean i went through it and i'm okay anyway back to the story so while i was in, while i was on extension yeah there was just this rumor i don't even know how it started i don't even know how she was very convinced in this girl that used to believe me let's just call her yoruba so she was very convincing and like she would go around telling people oh you know belma said this about you, you know belma said that about you she was just very manipulative and she was good at season she was really good at it and people used to believe her but nobody would ever be able to say oh even her click here yeah. this thing that i always you know what i'm not even going to go to what so deep into the story because i'm going to talk about it later i think i'm just going to have a video for like my bullying story or something why is my <laughs> sorry you guys so yeah i think i'm just going to have a whole other video about my bully story but the thing I never understood about people here yeah, in my set then was what did I ever do to you personally? Nothing. You just always hear, oh, but the master said this, the master said that. But where do you hear it from? From this Yoruba girl, and then I don't talk to her. So how the hell am I going to meet her to tell her that, to tell her one or two things about you? Like it just never made sense to me. Anyway, 
So she would do many things to me. She would like bring me out and embarrass me. She would come out and say, oh, so I heard you said this about me, blah, 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 blah. like in the dining hall. My juniors would be there. You know, she did a lot to me. She did a lot to me. And I don't think, I don't know if she knows how much it affected my life, but it did. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's still okay because now I can tell you guys about it and tell you guys how to get over depression and stuff like that. So anyway, this is how, this was like my lowest low. During extension, I didn't have Ori and Kendi. Those were like my only two friends. And we were always in the, in the um, hostel when we didn't have classes. So it's either you talk to the girls in the set or you don't talk to anybody at all. So um, yeah, so the, I moved to this other room where it was just me and about six or seven other girls here. Yeah, because. It was just getting too much. The rumors, the the eye rolls, like from all the girls and said, I'm like, what did I do to you? Anyway, Sha. So this one time, I don't remember what exactly happened, but this girl, Yoruba, she came to my room and she was like, Where's Belma? I said <laughs> it was so crazy. She was like, Where's Belma? And then she came and then she was like, she was I don't remember what exactly that argument was about or that confrontation was. She was very confrontational. She just wanted everybody to know that she's here. She, this, she's that, she was all this kind of mm, 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 kind of girl so yeah she was like that so anyway she came to the room and she said something to me and she did a lot and like two of my very close friends two girls i was very close to in my set stopped talking to me and they were not like her best friends <laughs> it was the funniest thing it was a funny thing but now it's funny so i really didn't have anybody that i was talking to or anybody to talk to yes yeah. so after she finished all that you guys when i tell you i broke down I broke down for three days. No food, no water. I was not doing anything but crying and just saying, God, please take my life. God, please take my life. I don't want to be here anymore. God, please. It was just a really hard time for me and I just really didn't want to be there. I just. I just didn't want to be alive. I just missed my best friend so much and I don't know, it was just too hard. Like it was it was just really hard and you know and then we didn't have phones in school. So I couldn't call my mom because when something like that happens I would typically call my mom first and I'm not crying because um because it still hurts. It, no, it still hurts. I'm not crying because of the story or whatever. It's just that when I just think of how much I went through, it, it's just really, really sad and it just it hurts my heart. So, anyway, I just lay on my bed and I was just like, God, please, I don't want to be here. God, please, like, just let this whole thing end. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. God, please, God, please. And you don't know what it feels like. Like, in high school, I was really, really strong. Like, I could go through anything and it was okay. But you don't know what it feels like here when you feel like the whole world is against you and like everybody's talking about you because everybody really was talking about me then everybody's talking about you like you're like the main gist or whatever it just really hurts and um so it just really hurts to think about it and just to remember it so anyway i'm not saying this part again i'm just going to go straight into it like i was saying i was just praying that you know god please i don't want to be here please just take my life just just let it end now i'm tired i remember saying god please i'm tired god please i'm tired let me just come and stay with you i'm tired i'm tired and like on the second day the, the, you know i told you guys it was three days that i was just down and i was just out on the second night i can never forget i cried so much i started to have all that pain it did not make sense at all because I wasn't even hungry, I, I started to have all sorts of things. My eyes were like bloodshot red, and I was just miserable. I really was miserable because of one person. And I won't even lie to you, yeah. It took a lot for me to forgive her. I held it in my heart for a long time. I'm talking till uni, like after uni. I held her in my heart for a long time, and just wish that it was in life. But you know, I'm just at the point in my life now where I have everything running for me. Even sometimes when things are not good, I'm, I'm still happy. Like, I'm so happy. I'm so blessed to have what I have now. And I will never take anything for granted. And this is why 
I'm so passionate about people that get bullied. I feel like I get emails from girls in school about, oh, I'm getting bullied by so 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 person, or I'm sorry, you guys, this video is pretty emotional, but I don't even care. I just want you guys to know that, like, just know what it is, and this is like, this is what it is, yes. Yeah. So, anyway, so yeah, that's why when I get all these emails, it's so hard for me because. It's like I, I'm leaving it with them and I, I totally understand where they're coming from, what they're going through and like I just always give them the best advice I can and I always get so emotional because these bullies don't even know how much harm that they're causing for the people that they're bullying. They don't know how much we go through and how for how long these things affect us. Like for a very long time I just had so many trust issues like just not only because of no bullying thing, but that's where it stems from. I just have so many trust issues and I didn't want to have friends. I didn't want anybody to I didn't want to bring anybody so close to me because of just my two friends that um, stopped talking to me. I went to Ghana and started ganging up with that girl against me, told her things I had told them in trust. Like three of us definitely were very close. So we used to talk about the girl, we used to like laugh about stuff and like so they went to go and tell her like, Oh, this is what she even said about you, blah, blah, blah. that was just the worst thing. And anyway, that's I'd, I'll tell you guys how I dealt with that one in another video, maybe dealing with betrayal or something, because that was like a hard blow to me. But anyway, enough with the emotional stuff. So now let me just tell you guys how I dealt with it. So what I did was uh, I started journaling. But I didn't start journaling. I always had a journal, but like I didn't stop. I continued to journal. I continued to journal every time. I would write how I felt. It just kind of made me feel. Like I was actually talking to somebody. Second way was my friends Ori and Kendi. They were just they just held me down for a long time because after extension they resumed and like I was just so happy. I've never been so happy to see them before. Like they were just they just did. In fact, I you guys Ori and Kendi, I would love you guys to be there. I love you so much. You guys, I've never told you guys that you guys all this before. Like, but you guys, I. <laughs> I don't even have the words to say, but I love you guys so much and thank you. I will always be grateful to both of you. Um, I talked to Oriya Kendi, so if you're going, if you're depressed or going through depression, definitely have two friends or one that you're close to and you talk to that understands. There's nothing better than on a friend that understands. The third thing I did was, this might sound really crazy, but it worked for me. And this was this is the real way I got over depression and the whole thing. It was. I used to sit down and talk to myself in front of the mirror. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. It really works. I tell you guys, it works like magic. So when I first started, the day I noticed it was one day I was crying so much for no reason. I didn't know what was making me so sad. I was just sad and I was just, ugh, I just didn't want to be here. I don't know how many times I've said, God, please take me. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. But here filming for you guys you know <laughs> so yeah and um, that was the day I, the, the, there was this one particular day that I was just praying I was like God please today God please today take me today and I just sat in front of the mirror and I cried I cried my eyes out I cried like there was no tomorrow and I looked at myself and said you need to stop crying you need to stop crying and I was nodding I was like mm -hmm. I even need to stop crying. It was crazy, but then it worked. Literally, I had been crying for like almost an hour, and then when I started to talk to myself, I stopped crying. And then I started saying, "You're strong. You get through this. You'll be okay." And then I had this, "I am." I still have it till now because there's still some days I need to say it to myself. I had this, "I am." Many things written. Yeah, I had like it was like a a a. a thing I used to say to myself in front of me, I would say like, I am strong, I am beautiful, I'm not going to be sad today, you know, I just had a whole lot of stuff, if you want to just drop your email in the description box or send me a message on my social media, I'll send it to you because it, it is so powerful, you guys, it is like the best thing I've ever done for myself, <laughs> honestly, having that I am thing, even now when, when I start to have like, times when I overthink, I notice that for me, overthinking leads to depression so when i start thinking so much i go to my i am it's on my phone and then i just like i am and then i have mirrors everywhere in this house there's one even right there right now and i'm like 
I am this, I am that, and then I look at myself and I say, I am, I am, I am. And when I'm done, I feel so much better and I feel so relieved. So that's what works for me for dealing with depression. Then one thing I did was I prayed about it. Like I had to change my prayer points. I had to change my prayer points from please take me, I want to go now, to please help me get through this. Please just help me. Please, you know, I had to change my prayer points drastically and believe me praying about it helped it worked it made me strong it, it just let me see the light at the end of the tunnel so i don't know whatever religion you practice or whatever you believe in praying about stuff always helps i promise you god is always listening always listening always ready to comfort you he will never leave you when you're down that's one thing i know about god never throughout that whole time when i was mad depressed oh yeah let me tell you guys how long it lasted here so this was in 2016 uh, i think when did i graduate i think june did i graduate in june no i graduated in may so this was like 2016 let's just say it happened in april yeah 2016 april up until about 2017 i can say that i was deeply depressed but the thing is nobody around me really knew i think just already knew that there's something wrong with this girl but like nobody around me knew and the thing with depression is it doesn't it robs you of so many things robs you of happiness robs you of love, love robs you of relationships friendships many things so don't let it um, encompass your life like don't let depression have a place in your life to the point where you're losing out of so many things i know depression is not easy to deal with i know that for a fact um, if you want to know about more about this whole topic, go to my blog. I'm going to link in the description box down below. Um, if you want to know how to help somebody with depression, I'm going to have a blog post on that. Uh, maybe sometime this week, so just keep checking. Um, it should be up by Sunday latest or something. I don't know. I don't know when, but definitely check it out. It really helped me because I have had a friend that is dealing with depression and that has dealt with depression and it keeps me recurring and. You know it's hard but we get through it together and that's that's cool anyway so that's how i dealt with depression i talked to somebody i journaled about it i talked to myself and i prayed like crazy so yeah this has been one emotional video but i'm happy i finally shared it if you have any questions and um if you need somebody to talk to i'm always here i know exactly how you feel um i know what it feels like to be bullied i know what it feels like to feel like you're worthless I know what it feels like to be embarrassed in public. Like, it's crazy. When I do embarrassing things, my sister's like, oh my God, man. And in my mind, I'm just like, you don't know what embarrassment is. Like, you know, you don't know what embarrassment is. Like, it is it. You know what, I think I'm just going to have a whole other video about my bullying story. And I'm just going to talk for as long as I feel like talking. And not be conscious of the time. Because now I'm looking at the time, I'm like, ah, this video is getting long. So I'm going to have a whole bullying story. I just said, you guys know my whole story. So anyway, we've come to the end of this video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, this is not a negative video. I don't want to have a negativity on this channel. I'm just sharing you get with you guys like my own story. And just, I hope it helps somebody. And you know what? You have to leave this video on a very good note, on a very happy note. Go and check my blog out. Um, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I don't want to leave this blog on a sad note. So yeah. Um, yeah, so spam the comment section. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how you felt about this video. Uh, I don't know. Just talk to me. I love hearing from you guys. Anyway, to you guys, this video is getting too long. So, bye-bye. And I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to check out the blog post. Okay.